winners make a habit of manufacturing their own positive expectations in advance of the event. Let me repeat that. Winners make a habit of manufacturing their own positive expectations in advance of the event. And um, when you're a winner, you basically plan to win at all times. Mark Golden is a loser who uh, will continue to be a loser. And he always seems to be planning to lose by trying to set up things just in case he loses. Hello everyone, Karen Cecilia here. It's a warm, warm evening in Kingston and it's nice. Happy to be alive, grateful and thankful to be alive. And um, we all should get up each day and be that, you know, happy to be alive. So I'm be, doing this quick, this quick thing. It's it, I hope God, I hope it's not going to be long. Cause sometimes when I start chatting, it just go on and on and on forever, and um, and uh, and, and I'm not watching the time. So I have still been doing. I am still been doing some some. Um, I have still been doing some interviews and some analysis of the last local government elections, 2024. I've been interviewing first-time voters on the vo on the phone in my constituency and some of the constituencies around Kingston. But I have also interviewed mostly young men from St. James, Hanover, Westmoreland, St. Elizabeth, and um, Manchester. I'm doing others as well as we go on. But after this first one, I said, let me let me clue you in and um, and, and and let you know what I've been doing. Um, the worst thing that could have happened to Mark Golden was the local government elections. It, it is the worst thing, one, because he thought he was going to win a landslide and he lost. He was going around the country promoting this idea that we need to get rid of the wicked um, and heartless government. And I still have not yet explained to you why he was using that language. But I, I promise you, and, and, and I usually try to keep my promises. If I can't, I will come and tell you that I can't. But I, I still promise you that I'm going to explain to you why he was doing that. So Mark Golden is Andrew Olness's ticket to a third term. <laughs> and I want to share the reasons why I'm telling you that. So the Don, the Don, Don Anderson, had gone out and um, he did another poll. I don't know which one it was, but he did a poll. Um, I don't remember if it was the RGR poll or he did the poll for the PMP. But that poll that he did said, in a, said that the young people said that they were going to vote for the PMP. That's what the Don said. I would imagine that he asked them the question, who are you going to vote for should an election um, be called? And they said the PMP. I'm imagining that um, he probably asked them why, and um, they probably start shouting at the top of them lungs that their money not go out nothing, their money are corrupt, they are thief, the whole of the money for themselves. I'm imagining that because that is what I'm hearing. You know, their money are corrupt, and they are keep all the money for themselves, and they are thief the money, and ray, ray, ray. I am sure that Dan, unlike me, never asked them to name one of the corruption that they're talking about. But of course, me, I ask them. I am asking because everybody's harping on this whole corruption thing and uh, them not seem to come up with any, it, um, it, it seemed to be a general generic answer to everything, which leads me to believe that some of our voters lie, not only to pollsters, but they lie to the political people who ask them to come and vote. A truthful voter would tell you, you say, why don't you vote? somebody coming to my ice cream shop many of them coming to the ice cream shop that um had never voted before um uh, before the election i say so why what what you're the voters this yes me are the voters this must soon every time when i do things so why you why you don't vote me can't be bothered me me can't bother with that that's a waste of time now that's an honest answer from a voter very honest answer me can't bother uh me know the guy me know him me know, me know patrick patrick um roberts me see him but me can't bother um, there's a waste of time and the them are the same thing. I mean, I know what I vote for. That is an honest voter talking to you. 
because that's what you get from honest voters. The ones that really have no, 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 them no, 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 no qualms to tell you um, that is about corruption, but them don't know which corruption they matter about. Them just uh, use the general <laughs> argument um, about corruption. So them, them harp on that and them shout it by the top of them lungs. Boy, the man, them corrupt and they appear corruption and go on and ray, ray, blah, blah. So Mark Golden was going around the country shouting out that them won the local government election. He was screaming it, all that, all that, and yelling at the top of his lungs how he was going to sue the government if them do call the elections and Ray and Andrew was paying him no mind. Mr. Holness was paying him no attention, no attention to him. Mr. Mr. Holness was just watching him going on because Mr. Holness have Mark Golden ticket. Mr. Mr. Holness look at Mark Golden from time to time, I am imagining in my head that every time Mark Golden hold me mouth, Mr. Holness treat him like a gig. Uh, and then you ever own a gig, uh, I just roll him, you just wind him up, and you just let him out and let him spin. Now, if you are good at gig, it can spin for a good while. I mean, I was a genius at gig, just like I was a genius at marble. But, you know, so Mr. Holness had Mark Golden as a gig, wind him up and um, let him go, make him spin out of control and uh, let him talk foolishness. So while Mark Golden was out there shouting at the top of his lungs that the election should be called, the local government election should be called, them don't want to call the elections, them afraid for call the elections, we are going to sue the government if them don't call the elections, elections must be called, no, it's an injustice. I mean, Mark Golden was going on and on and on about that. Mr. Holness, of course, was still not paying him any, any attention. Mr. Holness looked at the political landscape while Mark Golden was going on. And Mr. Holness realized that at some point, he must have call an election. As to which one, we don't know. But I, I am gathering he looked at the political landscape. He knew he was in hot water with the voters. still is. But he also knows that Mark G is weak and ineffective. And so he kept holding out on the, on the local government election until he figured out a strategy. As I have, as I have said before, no government has ever called an, a, a local government election to test the pulse of the voters or to measure their performance. And in spite of the polls continually giving Mr. Holness an edge, Mr. Holness knows that polls are only indicative. They are not predictive. I mean, a, a, a poll can indicate to you what could happen or what could possibly happen, but it's not a predictor to tell you that this is going to definitely, definitely happen. And while that poll, the polls continue to give him an edge, it also shows him sliding, losing support among his own um, voter base, the base that he um, depends on. And so he was, he, he was being cautious. So he himself knows that he's losing some consequences, and particularly those that were previously um, dominated by the PMP, you know, like the Westmorelands, um, the Central Kingston, East Thomas, Eastern St. Thomas, um, Northeast St. Elizabeth, uh, Southeast St. Catherine, Central Manchester, South Manchester, um, the likes. Mark Golden, on the other hand, was touring the island and screaming about the wicked and heartless government. And make could vote them out, vote out the wicked and heartless government. And Jamaican people want me, Mark Jefferson, to be the prime minister. They want me in Jamaica house. So let us vote out the, the wicked and heartless government. I am still not ready to talk about that yet. Give me some time, please. So he was screaming all that and yelling about all of that. And Mr. Holness while not paying any attention to him, began carving out a strategy. If you liken what they were going through to a poker game, and I'm not a poker player, I am not a poker player at all, but if you liken to what they were doing, um, Mark had his hand, which he thought was, which he was playing, and he, and he thought that, you know, his hand was a winning hand. And that hand is, 
Mark, without a, stra a correct strategy, a proper strategy, his only strategy was to count on the amount of animosity and anxiety from some new voters um, uh, um, against Mr. Olness. He was also counting on the anxiety of PMP voters who didn't come out to vote in 2020. Those very same PMP voters that he himself, Iman Bunting, sabotaged the party for those people not to come out. So uh, um, he was counting on that the angst against Mr. Olness and that that angst will bring out voters and in a rush and that will give him the victory that, 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 that he needed. But when he was doing all of that, he was also playing right in Mr. Holness's hand. Because Mr. Holness then decided to go on the road and go check what go on with the people. Mr. Holness, people was telling him one thing. Mr. Chang was telling him one thing. Mr. Montague telling him another thing. Desmond McKenzie telling him another thing. Mrs. Holness was telling, telling him another thing. And the Young Turks on the ground as well. The operators was telling him one thing. But I, as, I, as I told you before, Mr. Old is a man that lived deep within himself. And uh, he is who he is. And he trusts his own instincts. So he was unsure. He was uh, unsure of what his people was telling him against what the polls were saying, knowing full well that the polls are unreliable because they are, they are indicative. You know? So he decided that between the polls and the info, information that he's receiving, it is best for him to go on the road, go check the polls for himself. And he went to the places that he contended that he needed to win. And he heard from the people. His little adventure on the road was like limited and, and sober. Yeah, there was no hype. And I believe it was during that time he started a real legitimate count of his chances in terms of not showing so badly. He also knew there was a problem in his own base. But I think Mr. Olness kind of um, work up back a little bit of his base and the ones that are still suffering from some kind of things that him, he has not yet fixed. He believed that he had time because however the local government election turned out, he still has time because he's a prime minister. And he started to count his seat. Mr. Olness not only saw where he was, I think that he decided that he was going to go with the LGE um, from early. I think he decided that from early, like his first tour, that, that tour down in Mantuga Bay when the people surround him and some old people youth I give out against him. And then after them done, they had some private discussions with some old people. And that, that, that's a part that, that was never shown, you know, and settled some, some nerves. About, about things. So he decided to roll the dice and, taze, and take his chances because however it ended, um, it's worth the risk because he still has time. Mr. Hall has heard from the voters. He saw them. He, he felt their anger and their frustration, their anxiety, their problems, which they blamed him for. He saw it for the first time because he was in this bubble thinking that him Clarks and him Brogard name was still working for him, but it wasn't. You know, he was, so he stepped out of the bubble and he faced the real music and it was sobering for him. As I said, the worst thing that could have happened to Mark Golden is him getting his wish. Because I believe Mark Golden was bluffing. It is my view that he was bluffing. He did everything that he could to get the hype for the local government election, but he never really wanted it because they surmised over the PMP side, that Mr. Owen is afraid to call the local government elections and he might just want to hang on long enough and just go straight into a general election, which was why they had that strategy, which I'll explain to you soon, I promise, you know, but he never really wanted um, any election, but he could not avoid calling for it. He had to, you know, um, I'm sure people advise him that he, he, he must, you know, call for it. And he was surprised. I think Mark Golin was surprised. I watched the interview again um, when the elections was announced and the, the, I watched the interview again just to see his body language again. And he was there saying, well, it's about time because we were going to take them to court and him start talking about the court. He wasn't celebrating the fact that the local government elections, um, the date was announced and they're going to go on and he wasn't talking about we are going to work the ground and we're going to bring out voters. No, he was talking about it's about time and we were going to sue them. So he was 
living in, in, in that moment still about, about all of that. And his body language was, he was surprised. He was a little uneasy because he hadn't gone in yet um, to sit down with Angela them for them to tell him uh, what had gone on. And he never knew what to say. So he just say that. That wasn't a talking point that he was given for work with in nine pocket. So Mark ended up with a 3-9 off suit and, and Mr. Holness ended up with a royal flush. So, let me be clear about something. The young people and the new voters in this country don't seem to have an understanding about some things. So I want to say this, all right? The word I'm happy on the corruption thing, and I want to address a little bit about that. Andrew Holness is corrupt. But Mark Golden is corrupter. Mark Golden is more corrupt than Andrew Holness. When Andrew Holness was Minister of Education, there was no anky panky about him. There was no investigation of the Ministry of Education. There was no indication that any kind of bad things or anky panky or thievery was going on in the Ministry of Education. So Andrew Holness' name wasn't called up in any of those things. He, 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 he sailed through his time as Minister of Education without any per person or anybody accusing him of anything. But as soon as he became the leader of the, uh, of the JLP, Peter Phillips started harping uh, about his, his, um, his house as part of the campaign. The, the, the campaign, well, not, not soon after. But during the campaign, Peter Phillips started talking about Andrew Wilner's house. That was Peter Phillips um, warning to the very young people who were going out to elect Mr. Mr. Holness shoes and in Brogard name. That was Peter Phillips' way of saying this man has a potential to be corrupt. He might have this house, he's building this house, but then we get the money from and there, there was no clear anything that he was teething in the money from the ministry that he was a, a member of, that he was minister of. There was no ac accusations coming from anybody. But Peter Phillips was sounding the alarm that he might have the potential to be corrupt, corrupt because he's building this house. That nobody know him get the money from. So he was never in any um, anky panky with that. As prime minister, his name has never been called in any of the anky panky either. Nobody ever accused him of anything. You ever hear say, PM only steal some money from Jamaica House or something missing from some ministry that him in charge of. None of that. None of that. And you the same young people. You all went out and voted for Mr. Hollis. You voted for him. You voted for him shoes, the clerks, and you voted for him name, Brogard, and you like the hype and you do the excitement and you voted for him. Now all of you and the new ones that have been added to the list a new breed has now come on and happen that don't want to get rid of Brogard. And the worst thing about that is that it is your right as vote, as now people who are on the voters list and some of you voted in the local government elections because some of you were told that if you go out and vote for the PMP candidate, you'll be getting rid of Brogard. Well, you failed. You never get rid of Brogard. He's still the Prime Minister. He's still have a couple, a year and plus to, to go uh, before you, you get the chance to vote him out if you want. But you went, all of you, went and voted for him in 2016. You voted for him. You, 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 you ushered him in on this, on this, on, on this pedestal that he is Brogard and him have a cool name and him wear cool clerks and you and him are, 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 um, have the same kind of taste and him are mesh with you and you are mesh with him because him understand, you know, understand him. And now, because you blame him for the lot, for your lot in life, and you blame him for everything that has happened to you as a young person. I mean, it's not your parents' fault who buy the car key and buy the expensive shoes and give you the, the fancy bag where you want and get you, make you go do your hair and all kind of things. And you go to school, go hang out, you're going to play a field and smoke ganja and waste time. So it's not your parents' fault. It's, you don't think it's your fault either. So now that you turn out to be that guy or that girl who who graduated from high school and can't move past the graduating from high school, Mr. Olis is to be blamed. And if you are one of those who who have graduated with some subjects and can't seem to get nothing and can't go up further because you can't get the money for sending a university and stuff, it is Mr. Olis' fault as well. And if you 
if you if by chance you you, you become 21 22 and you get a girl pregnant and things get rough now because you have baby and you can't seem to get it all together that is also mr world's fault all of you and the worst thing about that you want to get rid of him now and the worst thing about that is that you're not even sure about who you want to replace him with you're not sure because i interview quite a few of you and some of you who are listening your peers people who think like you talk like you act like you behave like you have future plans and dreams just like you and it's still mr holness fault and you'd like to vote him out and you know exactly you don't exactly know who you want to replace him with because you don't know the other man the other man nano clocks and him now have no cool no cool name we'll call him marky g but that is a mock name and you don't know you don't care about who you want to replace your leader with and that's a problem with this voting country the voters of this country is that you're always not voting for something you always seem to want to vote against something or against someone well you don't have no thing to vote against so no voting is always about voting against somebody getting rid of somebody and replacing that somebody with a worse smaddy and then about a year or two you want to get rid of that smaddy who you put in by getting rid of the first smaddy and the cycle continues the cycle continues so you want to vote up mr Ollis, who you call a thief and him corrupt and you want to replace him with a bigger thief a more corrupt man Hmm? Say the whole owner say, let's say Mr. Wall is Steve millions, millions, hundreds of millions, even. Mark Golden have stolen billions, billions off the black off the back of black people. Him and him friend Peter Bunting. They have stolen and corrupt this country in the to the tune of billions. And it's him you want to replace the man with Thief millions with. Because you're upset about something that you believe that somebody did to you or didn't ever do for you. A PMP. Me is a PMP. I'm not a tribal PMP anymore. But I'm a PMP. And I would very much like to see my party in power. But I'm going to do everything in my power to ensure that Mark Golden does not become Prime Minister of this country. And you, the voters of this country, need to understand that every time some kind of thing happen, I don't want to blame the whoever in government now. You ought to start thinking about who you're going to replace them with. Because you're always just thinking about the guy you want to get rid of. That's all you always want to think of. The guy you want to get rid of. And you never thought for an instant about the guy you want to replace him with. So it's my job and responsibility to present to you the guy you want to replace him with. So Mr. Olin is thief. Mark Golin thiefer. Mr. Olin corrupt. Mark Golin corrupter. So what are you going to do now? What are you going to do? The young people that I spoke with across this country, all of them basically have the same argument. There's this one in Westmoreland. They are said to him, so what you do? So I'm a farmer, you know. So I said, what your farm? Hey? <laughs> a farmer, man. Me nobody ask for further. Me know what him farm. All right. The one I spoke to in in Manchester, him is a welder. Him not have much work, but him also with a with a with a next brethren. And him went and vote the other day, and him vote against the the, the PMP candidate. Him said him vote for the GLP person. Me, me asked him if him know who the GLP person is. Him said no. Me asked him, me, me said, do you know who the GLP person is that you vote against? Him said no. Have you ever come across a GLP person that you voted against? No. Do you, you don't know their name? No. Same thing with the guy in St. Elizabeth. He don't know who the GLP person is that he voted against. But he voted for the other PMP person because he wanted to get rid of Bogard. So I asked them. I said, what happened when these guys don't work out? You're going to vote against them now for the next guy. <laughs> Why, mommy? Mommy, you know, that sort of thing said. I said, no. The thing was set that way because you believe it and you set it that way. Now that a couple of them have children, now that you have children and you have to teach them things, you need to start taking stock of who you're replacing the people you're voting out with. You have to start thinking about that. 
Yeah, that's true, you know. Yeah, man, that's true that because you know you can vote for a man, you know, and you think same as that, and then the next man come in and join with the man worse and go out, peer things, you know, bedrid. Yeah, man, you know, I'm gonna be right, you know. Yeah, I get in a lot of that. I suspect that when I do the next five um parishes, I'm going to get basically the same argument. Because they don't know who they are replacing the guy they're voting against with. And that is where their new education begins. Don't get up and talk about, oh, the one, the, uh, there, were, there were five or six guys, but the one young lady, the one young lady that, that I interviewed, she, was, she had a whole different um, argument about every damn thing. She had a view on everything. It was very, a very interesting conversation. So I, so I asked her, I said, did you vote? Yeah, she knew who she voted for. I said, do you, did, do you know the, the other guy that you never voted for? She said, no, you know, but I know him, 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 him wasn't going to win. Is that a person that I voted for was going to win? Ah, I see. So it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a stronghold for the, for the, for the PMP. Yeah, yeah, it's a kind of stronghold. So the next day I would make no sense. I said, have you ever met him? Yeah, he passed through, but he may look ready. He may look ready. So, I still let her go with the, 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 the PMP person. And she said, she don't, she said, I mean, I'll go with the PMP person because me have PMP, you know, come and vote against PMP already, you know. That was the most interesting conversation about you. Me vote against PMP already, you know. Already? <laughs> I said, yes. When did you vote against the PMP? Me vote against the PMP in 2020, man. Me vote against Mountain, man. Why was that? I, I mean, I was pricked up. Why did you vote against Mr. Bundy? If they just get too cocky to your yeah, mom, if they get, just get too cocky to for my taste, and them people them up at the office and go like a beg, yeah, beg them something like me no vote. And when you go to them about nothing and talk about man in office until Thursday and man in office until Friday, you show voters honest about those things? That's when they talk to honest voters. Not, not when you poll them and them give you some kind of um, general generic argument about corruption and stuff so i asked all of them all of them how they felt about the whole corruption thing they were stumped because they now asked me so are we trying to corruption yet that no mom <laughs> you know, they all started out talking about the man them corrupt you know right and them couldn't name a corruption they forget that them said that you know and then we, we turn right around and we come back to it. And I came back to it. And I said, so we have problems with the man because them corrupt. Yeah, but, you know, are we, are we, so are we trying to have corruption? You talk about no man. I said, I don't know how to talk about corruption. I uno must tell me. The man them say, yeah, trick with man. I said, no. I just came back to the question. Now that I've engaged you in other conversation and you seem to be talking to me truthfully and honestly, now I come back to the argument of what corruption you're talking about. And then this one guy, the one on the one tell me where my farm, said to me, say, you know, say, the man them not share the money. The man them not share the money, Rasta. The man them for help you with the money. Them for take some of their money that just help you. So basically what he's saying is that, who the can't all you want? Just help we. Help some of we. And remember, you know, I have always said this thing, you know. I have always said it. People don't have a problem with corruption. They have a problem with the fact that none of it now, none of the money now reach them. Everybody, I, I take it and I take it for themselves. Everybody take it and go on them yard, go build more houses, buy more cars, send them picnic, go have more foreign. Them should run out of foreign to send them picnic. Buy more shoes, have more this, have more that. And there you have it. There you have it for the young people. Them. It was a most interesting and informative conversation it's the most interesting and informative conversation i have had for the longest while and because you're not standing in front of them because it took me a while to line it up to have the five of them on the phone one time it took me a while to, to, to inform them to get them a consent to go back to them one day go back to the two day and get it all work out Five young men, one young woman. And it took me a while to get it all together and have all of them on the phone talking to me. One of them even video call. I want to see your face, you know, because you're not easy, you know. Trust me, you're not easy, man. I want to meet you. 
and talk to you. You know, easy, you know. So I put up a video. I get me. Yeah, man. So when you come down the ends, I say, I soon come back to ends, man. So now that I have the number, I can call when I come and let you know that I'm coming and stuff. They were easygoing young fellows. And I thank them for talking to me. And this is where we're at. So let me repeat. Let me repeat just for the general information to our voters in this country. Yeah, I don't have issues with Mr. Holness. I only should. Because he has not kept some of his promises to you. And yeah, you have issues with him and his government, some people in his government, because they have practiced some deep corruption which is, has, has not served the country right. Not served the country well at all. And you should voice those opinions. But when you deciding to go out and vote, don't only think about the man you want to vote against, but you should all start taking stock, taking note, and take Take note of the man who you who is proposing to take his place. You know, something else I want to say. That's why I sound like that. You want to remove one man. And in this case, Mr. Holness. Start, stop thinking so much about you want to get rid of him. They still think about it. It's your part. It's your thing. But also think about the man that you are going to replace him with. Think about that before you go to the pools and go swap black dog, which I'm not calling the Prime Minister a black dog, it's just a Jamaican phrase. Go swap black dog for monkey. Go swap one of your Jamaican man for a white English man whose parents and grandparents own slaves. Think about that. Think about swapping one thief for a bigger thief. Think about swapping one corrupt man to a more corrupt man and a crew of Tapanaris corrupt men with him. Think it through before you make that decision. As I said before, I'm a PMP. I want my party to gain power, but that shouldn't be with Mark Golden as leader. I fear for my country, with Mark Golden as Prime Minister of this country. I fear for my country and I fear for my party. And many people within the party also have that fear. Some of them that will voice it for whatever reason. Their reasons, them, them can do anything they want. But I will not be quiet about it. And I will continue talking to people across the country. And as soon as I'm up and running, I'll be not doing um, phone calls anymore. I'll be doing visiting, you know, one of these days. So, for now, that is my short analysis of some of the election um, thing that spurred election. So, I will continue. And if, if, if it's the same argument I hear, I, I will not come back. If I hear anything new or anything more interesting that you would want to hear, I will come back and I will tell you. Thank you for listening to my rant. Um, stay safe, everybody. God bless you all. And keep the children safe.